Let me just give you a personal triangle. Um, can I used to live in Bristol for 17 years, some time ago, and uh, getting myself into this subject, just uh, three projects that I got involved in. The first one, and I doubt if anybody stayed there last night, is the Wyatt Chain in Bristol, which is uh, over there. You did, excellent. I mean, that was set up some time ago, but originally I introduced the idea to the Wyatt Chain as an environmental ed education centre, but in a city rather than in a national park. Um, and I hope they're retaining some of that, but that was about the power of education, I guess, to get people into this agenda. The second point of the triangle is, I don't know where people live, any, many people live in Bristol, uh, is in Southfield, which is just over the harbour, and there's a Southfield centre there, and that was um, the local authority response to a building, God bless them at the time, was to board up a secondary school on the basis that there weren't enough kids. The local solution was to take the boards off and set up a community enterprise centre, which was a centre for getting people actively involved in their community. And um, whatever we talk about psychology, I always like to put right alongside that the power of actually doing something as a way into then doing more. And then the third point of the triangle, just about works, uh, is over there, which is by St. Mary Redcliffe Church, which is called Phoenix Place. Um, it says in the notes in the programme that I'm the chair of a housing association, and that is a centre that we have uh, where uh, some very interesting uh, residents there, uh, about 15, 16, 17-year-old women, uh, majority of which have got uh, at least one child, if not two. And so that point of the triangle when we're talking about this agenda is making it relevant for people who have actually got some other stuff on their plate as well. And it's interesting that we, through the Housing Association, beginning to look at agenda around food and diet, transport, um, but coming at it a different way in terms of how one communicates it in than trying to dislodge or displace some very urgent other matters that people have. So that's my sort of immediate triangle uh, for getting into this. Um, there's the first slide. Nobody showed me how to move this thing. So um, what's interesting, I've only been a civil servant for eight months, so I don't know whether that's good or bad, but take that into account in terms of what I say. Um, but what was amazing to me and what attracted me there was that DEFRA have got something called a Centre of Expertise on Influencing Behaviours, which is certainly the longest pl place that I've ever worked in, um, but it's quite interesting that it exists. So because of the time limit and because I broke my rules about not using PowerPoint, because I don't, uh, but I do now, um, I'm going to skate and point. I'm, uh, I'm taking it as, rid as, as read that you'll get these slides uh, somehow. Uh, you've either had them or you'll get them later. So you don't need me to talk you through them because you can do that over your Pinot Grigio uh, in a couple of days' time. So I'm just going to point and shoot and ask you some questions. Did you know that DEFRA, and thereby government, has a framework for sustainable living? And these are the nine main behaviours that are within that. And then they break down into it. Did you know that? And while you're thinking about yes or no, which is a fairly easy question for you, <laughs> after coffee, um, it's been signed off ministerially by at least four departments. So, sh quick show of hands, who knows about it? Market penetration, low. So, I'm going to point you in the direction of Google, Framework for Sustainable Living, because hopefully that we won't fall out too much about those as, um, ways that we're trying to encourage people to live. So that's interesting for me that government has actually, and I had a meeting with, well, who was Lord Henley, who was in the department until recently, he'd gone to the Home Office now, really engaged in this whole agenda um, and could be engaged more. Okay, um, for those of you um, like me that may be new to the public uh, sector or those that like to work with the sector, let me just give you some four words now that is, interestingly for me, sort of an well, either a new way or certainly the current way of working with the public sector, which sort of relates to what we've just been talking about around the tables. But it's sort of a, a shift in the approach. Um, the first word is enable, and that is really high up on the agenda of working with colleagues, is about making it easier for people to act, taking away barriers, um, all of that agenda. That is live now. So in terms of trying to make this whole thing in terms of engaging people more effective, the sense of direction of travel now is getting rid and making a barrier, is making it easy to act. So when you're working with people like me and others in the public sector, this is hot word now and that's what everybody in, in this audience and beyond have got to contribute. The third word is about engaging, getting people involved. You know enough from what the commentary has been in the media and elsewhere that the government is now saying, for all sorts of reasons, you know what they are, the government, public sector, can't do it on its own. So you have to get other people involved. And that's a great imperative 
So again, relating to the um, previous discussion about sectors working together, there's been no better time uh, to want uh, to get people engaged. I'll give an example later of that, actually, with the NUS, National Union of Students. Third one is exemplify. And again, um, you know, the psychology within this for many people is, uh, thanks very much, but if you're not going to do it, then why should I? And so the government has had to recently address a 10% uh, reduction in its own carbon footprint. Now it's 25%, and that's spreading into water use, paper use, other material use. It's everywhere now when you work in the public sector, which is great. In fact, there's a new term now, which is lift sharing in the department. Not lift sharing to work, but you can't get in a lift. You have to use the stairs, or you have to crowd the lift to make it uh, effective. And the fourth word is to encourage because you can have the greatest rhetoric and you can have the greatest evidence base, but you've also got to think, how are you going to encourage people to get involved and do something perhaps which is not in their normal you know, habit or their norm of behaving or what the rest of the street or the village or the neighbourhood is doing. So where are the incentives and disincentives that need to be applied? So, for example, you know, many of you will be involved in the discussion about the forthcoming Green Deal. So where are the incentives in the Green Deal for you and I? And some of you may be aware of um, work that the government's looking at piloting now around whether you get a, uh, a respite from council tax, whether you get vouchers for DIY, if you actually get involved in the Green Deal. But much to say about in the whole psychology of this, how you communicate it, what are the incentives that people might want to do? So there it is. This is one of the tools that government is increasingly using, the four E's. Anybody use this? Quick show of hands again. Market penetration, zero. Well, that's interesting. That means a job for life for me. And basically, yesterday, yesterday, give you an example. I was doing this exercise as a tool. It's not a slave. It's a tool with the forestry team who have got the challenge of increasing the use of UK sustainable timber in the construction sector. So they can either, option one, sit in a room in DEFRA and write the policy. Option two, go through some of this challenge about how you're going to work, how you're going to incentivize, work with others, how you're going to incentivize others, and so on and so forth. Completely different way of working. Right, there's another tool that is used increasingly in government now called Mindspace. Another show of hands. How many people have used Mindspace? How many people, thank you, how many people have read the report? Okay. Hopefully those that have used it have read it, so it's interesting that more people have used it than read it, but never mind. Um, <laughs> maybe just tire, tiredness coming in on the arm. So I'm only going to use one example here. I point you in Google again. Google Mindspace, really interesting about, I mean, it's a mnemonic about Mindspace. Well, I'm not going to slave through it, I've only got 10 minutes. If it was a three-hour presentation, I'd have you well asleep by the time I got to the E. Um, messenger, so here's one for you, Andy. If, say, there's something we want to say about your agenda about birds, if I said it, or DEFRA said it, it's, it would be heard completely differently than if a passionate organisation that you work for, with a huge track record, a membership, examples, and all the flourish that goes with it, is the messenger. So that's just one thing in terms of how you get stuff across, is think who you want to get it through. And I was just chatting to somebody uh, over coffee from the uh, namesake, I think Anna Russell, are you out there still? From the National Trust, and they're brilliant. And you've just seen a really good example of getting a membership organisation to be the messenger about something as important as planning process. OK, um, here's some things just to bear in mind in terms of uh, getting involved in this stuff, some of the best practice principles. I'm not going to read all the text in black, because uh, you may or may not be able to see it from the back of the room. I'm just going to do the white ones on the side. The thing to bear in mind in terms of how you try and get this stuff moving, in our um, opinion, uh, just the three things. There's no single solution. So if we're sitting here thinking, what's the psychology? What's the way of doing it? What's the silver bullet? It won't work. There has to be a whole diversity of solutions. And some of them are long term, some of them are shorter. We will, if you will, is about the exemplification, is that you've got to walk the talk on this stuff. If not, it's very transparent to those that you're trying to talk to, and they won't hear and do what you wish them to do. Three minutes to go. And the third one is start where people are at. And that may resonate with you, and undoubtedly that's probably what you do. Um, you can either read it, or you can't read it from there, but it'll be in the slides. But you've got to start where people are at. I just did this, really for you to take away after I finished, rather than in the pack, rather than go through it. Um, but I just wondered about the natural environment, why people are acting, why they're not. And certainly the evidence that we've got is, again, for the, the white text on the left-hand side, rather than me slave through this slide. Um, here are the things that we think are important in terms of the whole sort of atmosphere around that. What are the, are the doing are key. 
You know, if you're the only person in the world doing it, that's going to feel different than that everybody else seems to be taking a step forward. Skills and ability are more important than understanding. And one of the things there is that people can feel that their contribution can be very marginal rather than making a difference in the mainstream. And what's in it for me is important, but that what's in it for me may be environmental, but it may be something else as well about how, you know, something to do with their family or friends and the circles and networks that they operate in. And, it, and the fourth one is it just makes sense um, it just makes sense, one, through making a difference. And that was very much the power of local people, and that's why I referred to the Southville Centre as just one example where I could see that actually coming into play. Oh, what's happening there? Oh, goodness me, who did this for me? <laughs> right, who, when you're doing this stuff and looking at the psychology of who you're going to influence and all the rest of it, who segments the market, or do you just see it in a big block of people that you're going to influence? Who does market segmentation? That's not bad, that's pretty good. Uh, it's only less than 50%, so this is a slide for the, uh, everybody, but the, particularly those that didn't put your hand up. And when you're trying to get to people, it's not just one blob of people. You know, they're not all Mr. and Mrs. Blobbies out there. I'm not going to read this to you, but it goes at the top from positive green, so to get them to do the next thing is relatively straightforward, to stalled starters, honestly disengaged, and waste watchers. Read it for yourself, but it means anybody in here, and it's good that 50% were doing it, if you just see people as one set of people, then you're not going to get them all to move. OK, three quick examples in the last minute, and you can read these. Um, very quickly, just to put some case studies, and again, this is to take away rather than me to read it. The first one is around eating seasonably. Now, again, DEFRA could have printed a leaflet and posted it through your letterbox. Impact, X. This was a programme to work with partners like Sainsbury's, Tesco, the retailers, horticultural organisations, Royal Horticultural Society, Garden Organic, food service sector, Civil Society organisations, congratulations, National Trust again, I'm sponsored by them for today, uh, World uh, uh, WI and so on. You can read that for yourself. And basically, it was a lot of people getting together to push the message in lots of different creative uh, ways of communicating. This one is about moments of change. Um, Jeff, you may know a lot more about psychology of this than me and may be able to add to this, but this is about when people are changing, either having a baby, moving house, or in this case, students going to university, they may be more receptive to try new things. So this was a project, you can read it for yourself off the slides, um, about working with a number of universities to see how to get students, when they move from mum and dad are paying the energy bill to goodness me, I've got to pay it, uh, how you can influence them. I mean, you'll read it, awareness campaigns, peer-to-peer -peer support, so imagine a lot of beer drunk, um, get the universities to show the impact and have some competitions between halls. So that would mean even more beer drunk. But it's just a different way rather than sticking a leaflet in a fresher's pack. Uh, this one was about co-design. So this is about working with people. So this is a tower block, food waste, and how you can get people involved in it that were starting from ground zero. And co-design and the difficulties of doing it in that environment were absolutely paramount. And again, you'll read the slides for yourself, but what was really important was to get people involved in the design of it rather than just tell them what the answer was. And the final one is about who are you going to get as your intermediaries. This is about saving water. So again, DEFRA could have printed another leaflet, put it through your back door and your back door, impact X. Or this one was saying, well, when do people start thinking about water use in, in the home? One, it might be when they go to a shop and buy something like a shower, or it might be when the plumber comes round and they're saying, I need a new whatever it is shower. So this was an example of using intermediaries, people that are right in, when people are thinking about water consumption, water usage, and what shower head to have, whether to have an energy efficiency or e water efficiency one or any one, is to get people that are close up to the action, close up to the consumer, and get them up to actually talk to them about the options. That was the final slide, went one minute over. And the final offer is that if anybody in the room would like to do some creative, innovative, and new work around this area, then please get in touch. Thank you. <laughs>